choosing a life partner is the most important thing that you will ever do because either they are going to propel you forward or they are going to hold you back. So in today's discussion, today's episode with my mentor, Ra, we discuss the importance of this and what to look for, understanding the masculine and feminine energies and the roles and how we can choose that for our life and what we prefer. So I'm excited for you to listen. And if you haven't heard already, we have an upcoming retreat coming up in October. This is a luxury spiritual and wellness retreat, mindfulness. It's truly holistic, mind, soul, body. If you are looking to claim your power, if you want to release old stories, baggage, limiting beliefs, fear, and you want to remember how amazing you are and the truth of who you are and how powerful you are and how much love is inside of you, then this retreat is for you. So if you want to spend three days with amazing people and meet your soul family, this is for you. Go to the link in this description to learn more. And I'm excited for this episode. Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, all those fun things. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Feeling Free and today's guest, a lot of people say, today we have a special guest, but I actually mean today that we have a special guest because my brother Ra, this, I'm actually kind of getting emotional Ooh, already <laughs> because of how, because of how, like at the right time. Damn, Rod, I didn't even I didn't even expect this, but this is good. Oh man, I appreciate it. <laughs> I do. I do. But uh coming in at the exact right time. And I was looking back through so we worked in a mentorship together. He was mentoring me in masculinity, but much more than that, in a much more broad and deep sense. Um but all of that en encompasses masculinity and like what we'll talk about. And I was reviewing those notes and I was like, holy cow, I was like, these, this is so good. I was like, because you can hear some things, but it's not in the simple yet just true, like a truth way. Like I'm the type of person, I question everything. I'm like, okay, that may or may not be true. But revisiting these points, I'm like, man, these are some truths that still resonate with me. And so... Ra, thank you for being here. I'm excited to spread the wisdom, the ancient wisdom, and the wisdom of yourself and your essence. So thank you for being here, sir. Much appreciated, man. I appreciate the um, um, the opportunity and, and and you know the invite. It's um, it's great. You know, you um, were already standing solid. You know, on your own, you're already on a really solid ground. And, um, you know, I, I, I am glad to have been able to assist you. Mm. Well, thank you. And it's not done either. <laughs> but my first question or the thing I want to talk about, Ra, is I remember one of the first things you said to me that blew my mind was um, women need to be wanted and men need to be needed. Yes. And, I, and I was just like, whoa. And so can mm -hmm. you just this probably might be how this goes, at least in the beginning of you just expanding yeah. on these thoughts for myself yeah. and for everyone else, but women need to be wanted and men need to be needed. So it's an interesting, um, interesting understanding. You have numeric, um, prior to certain, um, colonization women, for, for the most part, always outnumber men based on the fact that in nature, in nature, there's no such thing as a male egg. A male egg? Male egg. In a, mm. Okay, all females reproduce themselves. Mm. So numerically, most children born are going to be daughters. It is, it is a man that... Um, can change that factor. 
Now, let me, before we begin, <laughs> let me tell everyone, he, you know, he knows that when he asks me a question, I go around to come back to the point. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, people have to bear with me. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a point that I get to. Mm-hmm. Um, all eggs produced are uh, within a woman are, are girls. So the man decides if that'll stay or change depending on who he is, his testosterone levels and all these other genetic things that go on where a man has the opportunity to change that. And are you just saying like as far as chromosome? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. So when women are born, again, they outnumber men. So men have more options. They have more options. So for a woman, women know this. And lately they know that, you know, for the most part, women outnumber men and, you know, the men have these options. So she wants to know that out of all of those options, you want her. And that still goes whether a person is monogamous or polygamous or whatever. They still want to know you want her. And that becomes important because of options. Mm. And it makes her allow it allows her to exist in her feminine because she feels wanted and and with men a woman can't completely exist on her own she can take care of herself she can provide for herself she can fix her own food she could, if given the proper instructions over the course of time, build her own home. She can do all of those things. So she does not in itself need a man outside of for fertility purposes. Mm-hmm. Men know this. Even if they don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we exist knowing that she's doing these things and then she allows us to come in and and, and then sit at the throne. Then she allows us to come in and give her direction. And she makes us feel needed. Mm. She gives up her ability to operate her own life and gives us the fulfilling feeling of being needed to do it. When the truth is we're not needed for that at all. Mm. But in order to feed our egos and our masculinity for to get the best out of us, Hey, can you take this top off? Hey, something's wrong with the car. Can you take it to the mechanic? Hey, will you take out the trash? Mm -hmm. And we feel good. We feel strong. We're we're taking care of her. When the fact is, she can open the top. She may have to go buy some devices. (laughs) She can take it to the mechanic. She can cut the grass. She can take out the trash. So she makes us feel needed, which allows us to feel strong. And that becomes the operating system zone and how we deal with each other. In ancient Hukupata, or what we call Egypt, you'll see that Aset wore a throne on her head. She was depicted with a with a with a um a seat on top of her head. The seat represents the throne that's already occupied by the feminine energy. Ooh. And the man comes in and rules with her permission because she already occupies the seat. 
So she scoots over and gives him permission to take the lead. Mm. But it's her throne. And, and that's how we operate. We've known this for thousands and millions of years. That's how we operate. I love that. That's You said a few things I hadn't heard before, which I'm excited for and I expect to happen. So before I have two follow-up questions. So I first I want to, my what I want you to answer first is, so to explain people like, where what you study because you mentioned egypt and you're going to mention some things right things that we've known for thousands of years like this is nothing new these this is wisdom that has been quote unquote lost or maybe not like so and maybe we've just been confused and misinformed and programmed so i want you to explain that first and then before i forget i want you to the question i had is because you said i love that of the throne is feminine, like, she, right. And I remember you telling me that she gives up power so she can receive love. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's what she's love to receive power, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. so interesting. So, and I just, so my kind of follow up question with that is what does, because every egg that's produced is technically female, unless a Y chromosome is given and, and then also like even the throne and the power is feminine. So I guess kind of like a chicken or the egg question is because both rely and need each other to thrive, you know, and it's not one is better. It's not a game of comparison, but so I guess I just have a question of because the feminine needs to give up that power so the masculine can step in and lead and so she can receive love. <coughs> so does one come first before the other? So, and then the dance begins like, so that's okay. my question with that. Okay. So let me go back to the first one, okay. <laughs> uh, which is what do I study? Mm -hmm. um, well, answer is everything I can. <laughs> one. Um, yeah. You know, all books are great in my opinion. Mm. You know, all information is, is great information. Um, you can learn anything from anyone, anywhere. Um, you know, I have mentors and elders that, you know, help prepare me uh, and still help prepare me. Amir Taj Tariq Bey, uh, Dr. John uh, Henry Clark. I read the works of um, Madam C.J. Uh, Velasky, uh, the works of uh, Manly P. Hall. Um, so, you know, I kind of branch out wide. Um, Drusilla, Drusilla Dungy Houston, um, uh, Dr. Uh, I can't remember. I'm, I'm um, getting his initials mixed up. But anyway, um, so several, several books. I mean, and and um, just studying, you know, the Bible, you yep. know, the Torah. I, I, for me, it just doesn't matter. It, it's all information. I study metaphysics, the uh, metaphysical understanding of uh, of the Bible and. Uh, astrology and uh, ast astronomy, um, you know, the understanding of the origin of words, which is etymology and law. So for me, um, I get into studying all these things so that I can be uh, more well-rounded in my understanding and approach things from, from many different um, angles versus just seeing it one way, you know, and it helps me. It helps me um, not only direct my own footsteps, but see the world a little bit differently. Um, so that's what I study. Um, well, now yeah. the, hold on. Ahead. So that's, I love that, right? And just like, yeah, just to provide yeah, more context is, yeah, that truly, when you say you study all those things, yeah, like working with you, you do pull from all of those things and mm -hmm. like, the exercises and the assignments and like the tools that you've like given me and the resources, it's just like, Whoa, like it really is everything mm -hmm. instead of like this thing has like the one answer of, I remember you breaking down like just one verse from the Bible that really goes into like metaphysics, you know, mm -hmm. and like in sex and creation and, but more than just like 
what we're told it means. And um, so when people ask you what you do or because you are um, like an astrologer, like what do you call, not just like an astrologist or astrologer, like <laughs> I, I don't even like how would you describe yourself in that way? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, the interesting thing is I, I probably don't <laughs> like. Um, you know, I've been a teacher, um, in some way or form since some capacity since I was 14. Um, so if I'm asked to pinpoint anything, I just say that, you know, I'm a counselor or a teacher, mm -hmm. even with astrology. Um, I do consultations. I don't do readings because my consultations are more about um, con you consulting with how to better understand how to use your tools to navigate your life. I'm not, I'm not necessarily reading your chart. I, I want to empower you um, to navigate your life properly. Mm. Um, so that's what I do. I'm more mentor and teach. And I use astrology as a tool for that. Oh. I use law as a tool for that. I use the Bible, the Quran, the Torah as a tool for that. Um, and all of those things come from a session with me, from sessions with me, from whatever it is you're going to get. I'm going to talk to you about all of those things, whether it's ancient cultures or etymology and understanding what you're saying and how that plays a part in your life and things of that nature so um that would probably be the better term you know uh, a teacher a counselor i love it all right now what what comes first who makes the first move well those are two different questions okay now, well what comes first about <laughs> neither and that's what's interesting neither come first because on a higher plane neither one of them exists. So what happens is that the question itself has roots in partially science and the understanding of, 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 of the world and our universe and all those things. But then it also has roots in, in gender supremacy. Mm. So, you know, we, we want to say, well, this one comes first because we're more important. And that one comes first because, no, we're more important. We don't want to make the world. No, you don't even exist in this way. So when we're looking at the plane of ether, there's no masculine or feminine. The masculine and feminine principle comes from a slowed down vibration. And because of that slowed down vibration, the masculine and feminine no longer could re uh, produce within itself. And when I say masculine and feminine principle, I say that for understanding other listener. The the one, the principle of the of the one, meaning one concept, one energy, could no longer sustain itself because it had lost its spiritual nature. So its vibration slowed down. Once that happened, it split into two different sides, two different opposing sides the opposition is the lesson that the two opposing sides are supposed to teach each other it's the same concept in astrology when you say um when, whatever sign you're looking straight across at, that's your opposition so for cancer it's scorpio no excuse me it's capricorn for taurus it's scorpio gemini is sagittarius aries is libra virgo is pisces aquarius is leo that's your opposition. And that's what the masculine and feminine principle uh, represents. But at the same time, it represents that. It represents the lesson, the lesson of those principles completely needing each other in order to propel forward. The masculine cannot propel forward without the feminine. And the feminine cannot propel forward without the masculine. It's an impossibility. <laughs> so neither came first 
they actually both came at the same time. What we, you hear a lot of elders, okay? Um, a lot of wise men and wise women. And they'll generally speak of the first beings on the planet as women. Mm-hmm. Well, they're only speaking of that because of how we understand things. The first beings weren't women. They have to, the ability to recreate with them in themselves because they harness both masculine and feminine energy. It was just one. And those, they, and they were asexual beings. And then they began to lose their spiritual tie to the creator, to the one, the one. And that slowed down their, their vibration, their spiritual propensity, slowed down their physical vibration. And then they no longer could exist within themselves and they separated. He separated as a reflection of her she separated as a reflection of him. She was entrusted with the womb Mm -hmm. and he was entrusted with the rod. Mm. And so the womb, you hear a lot of people, a lot of women, as we have these different movements, you hear a lot of women speak about what women can, you know, reproduce within, within themselves and, well, one, no, you can't anymore. And two, when you did, it's because you had the masculine within yourself. So that energy, that's when you were one. You weren't women. You were one. Mm-hmm. You weren't women. You weren't men. You were just one. It was it was joined together. The separation didn't happen separately because that, that's not possible. You never have women without men and men without women. We were in, in the physical. So even when we when we see these different things and we're hearing information, information is given out based on the, the, the degrees uh, of the listener. So I may say something to you based on um, where you're at knowledge wise, because you can understand. It. Yeah. I may say something, say the same thing on a higher or lower level to someone different because they don't have your gift of understanding they have their gift of understanding so to someone else i may say that women were first and i may just leave it at that (laughs) because that's what they can understand yeah but then to you i may say well no we were one because this this, isn't that and this you had this going on and this going on you had the more hall and tobati and you know and you're like oh okay got it if i said that to them they'd be like the hell he's (laughs) up wait what and Mm -hmm. then they so, so the information served no purpose for them. Mm, yeah, that's it served a purpose for you. So I gave them the information that served a purpose for them. And so that's where you'll see the elders a lot of time. Oh, yeah, the first beings were women, because you can understand that because you you look at women as womb as the womb, the creation is. Got it. Okay. Okay. Now, then later on, as you grow, then someone else will come and they'll tell you the rest. I love that. And yeah, as far as people like myself and everyone listening, yeah, they, they're ready for that, for that extra, what you just said to fill in the rest. They've already Mm -hmm. heard the other stuff. (laughs) They're they're ready for the deeper understanding. So I want to cover the second question and then to follow, I'm just going to, Ra, I'm going to keep, I have all these follow up questions for you, (laughs) but like, (laughs) so it's, um, I want you to cover, like, what does that mean from the Bible, right? Because it's like the Adam and Eve, as far as like, well, Adam and Eve, masculine, feminine, like, that was first. And so I'm curious for like, well, what is the one and how did that split? Because from a Christian understanding, at mine, right, and what, what is taught is like, that's the beginning, technically. Mm-hmm. And then the Genesis. And, but, and then I want to make sure we also cover... Well, because we covered what came first, which is neither and both. And then now that we're in this 3D, you know, universal, um, the vibration and reality that we exist exist in now, this physical world of who makes the first move then. Okay, so let me make sure I understand <laughs> the question. So 
question first pertains to the Bible and, and the references to Adam and Eve being the beginning and, and how did we come to that point of that understanding, basically? Yeah, so how do you merge what you just explained with like a Christianity? Like, Well, it's easy because what I just explained is the, is the origin and the root of Christianity, you know, Gnosticism. And what many um, Christians don't understand is that the first Christians were what we call Gnostics, okay? Gnostic means to know. Mm. And that's and G, isn't that G-N-O-S-T-I-C? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, T-I-C. T-I-C, okay. Mm -hmm. And that it means to know. And they studied astrology, astronomy, which is the origin of mathematics. And, and so... If if a, if a Christian has never taken the time to study the original languages, then they really never read the Bible. Ooh. Okay, and that becomes a big issue. You've never read the Bible if you haven't studied the original languages. You know, the original Hebrew, uh, the Greek, and, you know, um, has in, have you read the original King James Version? You know, have have you studied etymology, the origin, and things of this nature? Because the story of Adam and Eve is, is not only um, a story of the physical plane, but it's the story of the uh, astronomical plane also. Mm -hmm. It's the story of the, of the cosmos and how we move um, from one, uh, from the long day, which is 26,000 years. Okay, and then we move into, we'll just use the term shorter days, okay, uh, which is 2,156 years. Now, 2,156 divided by 12, I mean, times 12 is 26,000, which is your zodiac tape, your will of animals. And so as we, as we go into the story of Adam and Eve, as you go into, in the beginning, Aries, which represents the spark, was Gnosis. Okay, that's what the um, um, Hebrew versions are going to give you. And you're going to get into the creation where it tells you that and um, Gnosis, God, Yahweh, whatever, in wisdom, created wisdom it doesn't say um what the version that we have in the so-called americas says so it gives you a different aspect of understanding because it speaks of the, of the masculine and feminine in the, in the arc of creation mm. then when you get into the story of um adam and eve and and the creation then you and you get into uh, the, the story of the, the virgin in the um, uh, in the garden. Now we're talking about Virgo. And then he knew her. They've now moved into Scorpio because now we're talking about the sexual energy and all these different things. So hmm. we have to have a, a, a broader understanding of what the Biblios Heliotext or what we call the Bible is actually saying. And, you know, there are historical elements in the physical that it that it talks about okay but when we get into adam and eve we're also talking about the adam being atom mm -hmm. a d a m being atom a t o m which also is uh, a personification of nature in uh Ikuta, what we call egypt which is atom a t u m and then you get into eve which then goes into the evolutionary process of the atom. Atom goes into Eve evolution and propels forward the arc of creation. And we evolve through Eve, which mm -hmm. is also dealing with the womb and how it, things are created within that. So again, it depends on where your knowledge is at as to whether you can receive yeah. that lesson at the time. 
because for many Christians, you know, you still um, have many Christians speaking about, well, you know, astrology is bad and it's not yet. Uh-huh. You read the story of of Isa, uh, of, Isa of, of Jesus and Yeshua, and they tell you that the uh, you have astrologers out there who are following the North Star. <laughs> yeah, that is funny, actually. <laughs> yeah, the North Star <laughs> represents your North Noe mm-hmm. in astrology, which tells you the direction you're supposed to go. Mm-hmm. So you and then you have the scripture that says, "I will leave signs for you. Um, there will be signs in in the uh, sun and the moon." Like it's, it's right, it's right there in the Bible where it says that. But the preacher will tell you that, "Oh, these things are bad." While reading you the scripture, and and so that whole story of Adam and Eve. Um, depends on where you're at every degree of knowledge contradicts the lower degree (sighs) oh say that again that's so good every higher degree of knowledge contradicts the degree lower wow that's really good because i think that's and even speaking for myself of Mm -hmm. that's where i've gotten confused because it's like i'm literally just contradicting myself over and over and over that's growth Mm. if you're not if if where you stand at today is not in some way, shape, or form a contradiction to where you stood last year, then you haven't grown. Mm-hmm. You should literally be able to look back at things you said in the past and be like, hmm, yeah, I've grown there because that's not completely accurate. Mm-hmm. Because the secret is, is that everything is correct. That's, that's the secret. <laughs> everything is correct. And so as you grow, you realize that everything is right. Depending on your degree of wisdom at the time and your perspective. And purpose. And purpose. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and, and just on a simplistic on a very simplistic, um, in a very simplistic way, killing someone can be take on many different forms of right or wrong, but it's still the person is dead and you killed. Them. But based on circumstance, reason, it's either self defense or murder, mm-hmm. but the act is the same. So either mm-hmm. you can walk away free. Or you can be incarcerated for the exact same act. So what would, what could also be right at the exact same moment is wrong, depending on circumstance. And that's that's everything in life. Hmm. Spending a um, million dollars can be. Um, highly um, something that's, that's smart or to be something that's completely dumb. <laughs> Either way, the million dollars is gone. But what was the circumstance? And that's that's everything. So when we say north is this way, south is that way, it's not true. On a higher note, there's no such thing as north and south. That actually is true, because yeah, like, what is up and what is down, even because in a universal context, like, it's just everything is everywhere. Yeah. Can Can you actually go outside? No. <laughs> can you actually go inside? No. But the finite mind can't understand infinite concepts completely. Mm-hmm. That's why. The ancestors always said that all is one. There's no outside. There's no inside. There's no up. There's no down. It's just is. But we need these definitions and these things to define the realities Mm -hmm. so that we create concepts and rules that help us on a day-to-day basis navigate life. Mm -hmm. Is that really blue? 
No. We just call it blue. Just because we call it doesn't make it blue. That's just our concept. That doesn't make it what it is. It, we just say blue. Is that really a car? It's a collection of steel. But is that really steel? It's a collection of materials. But we call it a car. But it's really not a car. So it's, it's again, depending on where you're at and, and, and circumstances and all those things, everything is right. Mm. Well, <laughs> and it's, yeah, I like how you said just, which kind of even brings us back to now as far as, like, we could just get totally, um, you know, just, like, everything is nuanced and it doesn't matter. And, like, there is no up, there is no down. But like you said, concepts matter for our finite physical reality. Mm -hmm. And so coming back to even the reality of the concept of, well, we are all one, everything is all, but for the physical concept of the masculine, the feminine. Um, so the other question I asked was, oh, we, we covered what came first, which again, neither. So the next question would be like, well, who, not necessarily in a dating move, not in a dating question of like who makes the first move. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious of like what, you know what I'm trying to say? Like who takes the first step or the action and then the other follows? Well, there's no necessarily correct answer. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because it's cultural. And how how moves are made for culture is cultural. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's that's the interesting part. Now, in most cultures worldwide, the man is generally the pursuer. Today. Today. Today in this because, present moment. Yes. <laughs> and it has to be understood because when we start getting into the right and wrongs of things, again, we have to go back to what we just said. None of that is true. While at the same time, for current cultures and customs, circumstances, the way the world is built, there has to be uh, a cultural understanding and identity to allow the world to go right around. So in this culture, based on how society operates, the man will take the lead in most things and be the face, the face of the relationship. But the woman then becomes the backbone of it. She's the hitting hand of the hidden force that propels him forward. Mm. And that's the understanding of the Shakti and the Shiva energy. The Shiva energy, excuse me, the Shakti energy activates the Shiva, which, you know, it's a different story, but they can study that, you know. Yeah, go Google it. <laughs> yeah. And, but if we're talking about when a man meets a woman, interesting enough, um, Most culture men are taught you don't approach a woman until she welcomes you. Culture men. Most wild or unorthodox men just pursue, 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 pursue. Culture men make a move after she makes a move. Mm. Now, her move is a sleight of hand. It's just her opening, unlocking the, 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 the door for you. The door was locked, so I'm just going to go unlock it. I'm not opening the door because that ain't my job. Mm -hmm. I love that, but actually. I'm going to turn the lock in a noisy way so you heard me unlock it. <laughs> That's funny. Because she can't do it silently because you don't know that, you know, the, the door is unlocked. <laughs> so she has to 
give you that eye contact. Mm -hmm. She has to give you that smile. She has to give you that energy that allows you to know that she's comfortable with you approaching. So then you approach. Now, not only does that stop you from hearing no, as much as you would hear no if you just go about it the other way, but it's more of a cultured way of doing things. Now, you also have the other, other side of it where, you know, you have men who um, just, you know, approach women. They just, they just want to go. Hey, she's cute. I'm on it. Mm -hmm. Now, that becomes a numbers game. And you usually have a losing record. You know, it's like <laughs> in sales, you have 10 yeah. no's before you get to one yes. Mm -hmm. But that's the less cultured way of doing things. She makes the first move without really moving. See, Amber, I love that. She makes the first move without really moving. Mm -hmm. Right. To, to speak into simplicity as far as how most of us listening mm -hmm. and in our especially you and i's dynamic this is how we choose to operate in you know mm -hmm. so she makes the first move without moving she unlocks the door so it's seeming like nothing has changed but something has changed so then she she opens a space for you to show your masculinity Oof. to her you open the door. I didn't open the door. I just unlocked it. It ain't my job. It ain't her job to tell you to come in. Yeah, that's so interesting because it is, again, it's just beautifully handling all the questions of just typical social, societal norms or tropes, mm -hmm. right? As far as men make the first move, period. It's like, mm -hmm. yes, they're technically moving first, but in the actual, but the the woman still she made a move yeah she she actually has to welcome it mm. okay. that's interesting and on that yeah. note how mm -hmm. i remember you telling me that ben choosing a partner is the most important thing that i will ever do literally <laughs> literally so why yeah. legacy mm. you know um the right woman is what the world is built or destroyed off of. Oof. The prize of every war is called booty. Just what it's called, which <laughs> goes back to the feminine energy. She is the prize there because she carries a legacy forward. Is there an etymology behind the word booty? Yeah, but I don't remember. I actually did look it up and I, I posted it, but I don't remember what it says. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't remember. But she carries the legacy forward and she's the soil. You're the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And no matter how great your fertilizer is, if the soil isn't good, then what grows out of it isn't good and it can be vice versa too you can you know take great soil crappy fertilizer okay because you know you have the people going to be like and vice versa so you know just want to cover that <laughs> um <Yeah. laughs> uh, but when you choose to move forward with any particular woman she is going to Build or destroy. She is going to propel you forward or be the force that holds you back. Mm. That is literally that is literally her job. The right woman will have you jumping over mountains to please her which enforces your legacy 
or she'll have you emotional, non-productive, in a very um, negative situation where your legacy um, is now in question. Mm. Who you have children with is the most important decision after that, or it's the same decision. So as men, unfortunately, we're not really taught that we don't have a rights of passage in this country because yeah. we re- there's no real culture here. So we choose it by how fit she is, how cute she is, how nice she smells, which all those things are great and necessary because men are physical beings. But we're skipping whether she speaks life into us in a certain way because she's the backbone. You may be the face and you may be what everybody sees, but she's the real fiddler. And so you have to play, you have to pick a woman who, who knows how to play her instrument well for the good of your legacy. And, and the truth is most women don't. And so, because they don't have a cultural rites of passage Mm -hmm. and in current society, because you have so many uh, illegitimate lessons being given out by illegitimate people. It's only exasperating the situation because you you have um, women who aren't being taught true, true femininity. And that become makes it more difficult. So as a man who is in a certain position, who requires a certain type of woman, then you have to be really careful because everything that glitters isn't gold. Mm. And everything that's good isn't necessarily good for you. So you have to be careful because your legacy is at stake. Literally. She is the first teacher. She so, she is the first teacher. Yes. So what she puts into herself is what she's going to produce. Mm-hmm. So if she's a woman who is watching all these um, horrible shows, listening to all this horrible music, eating all this horrible food, doesn't want to expand her knowledge. Yeah. That's your children. That's your legacy. Mm. Not only is that your legacy with your children, but that's your day-to-day atmosphere. Is what it is. And so now what does that man look like when he goes out into the world? Because a man has to have strength to deal with the world every day to protect her. So I have to wake up in the morning. When I leave the house, I need to be empowered. Because my job is to protect, provide, and prepare. So if I wake up in the morning and I'm dealing and I'm in a negative atmosphere, when I walk out the house, I'm not empowered. I'm not in my full masculine power to be able to be the most effective I can be. When I come home, what do I come home to? Is it is is it is my home recharging me? Because mm-hmm. my job is to protect her. Her job is to recharge me so that I can protect her. So what's that atmosphere? What does that situation look like? And if you're not looking at a woman from all the from that angle, then eventually you look like what most of us have done, including myself. <laughs> because we didn't have the lessons. You deal with women because she's cute, nice body. And that becomes your mate, the mother of your children, and 
your legs. Thank you for explaining that. I love that. And it's like, for me, like that just hit home so much because it's like, it's when you said it's because I used to think of it just more as like, what do I want to like enjoy or be with? Mm -hmm. But then it's like, no, like you are literally choosing someone who is going to expand your mission to enhance that mission. Right. And it's because it's, again, it's that soil, that, that womb of, and like that recharging and mm -hmm. the legacy of that. And like, that just, just like hit me so differently. And then again, mm -hmm. that's equally important for women to choose a partner because she is actually like, okay, whose legacy, whose purpose am mm -hmm. I going to expand? Mm -hmm. So, yes. so she is choosing Yes. Whoever I am going to be partners with, I am literally creating more of what he is. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And that becomes her legacy. Ooh. And um, you remember um, the alchemist. Yep. And that's why, you know, one of the one of the greatest stories to me that is often kind of overlooked and people just look at it kind of to me as a love story, but the lesson in the story where uh, the young lad meets the woman from the tribe. And remembering that story, he wanted to give up his travels for her. Yeah, he wanted to, because he was going on his purpose, his legacy, mm -hmm. and he's, he, all these dreams that he had and he's like, Fatima or Fatima, like, I want to stay here with you and give it all up. And she was like, uh, no, because now you messed up my legacy. <laughs> so she empowered him. She was like, no, go be great because your greatness now becomes the legend of my greatness. Go. You may never come back to me. And I know that. But that's a part of my legacy and my tribe's legacy. I mean, go out and, and they make the world around us and we know they may never come back. But her words of wisdom allowed refused stagnation in him. I mean, you, you got you put that in many terms where you have um, the high school students who are dating and a young man gets a scholarship and she's like, don't leave me mm. instead of go. Or you see, it's it's a very it's a very dynamic situation. It, it's so beautiful in its element that way. When we start really understanding masculine and feminine energy and what is the actual purpose. Uh, of us mating. What is our actual purpose of this world? What are we doing? A lot of your concepts actually get buried and you start realizing, oh, yeah, this stuff that I've been thinking is, is some real BS because <laughs> this is like way off. Mm -hmm. and, and then you start looking at the world a little bit different because you realize that most of what we're taught is, is completely stagnating our life and our judgmental we're so judgmental of everybody and everything we don't understand or that's out of our concept you know but when you choose her think four generations ahead and you want four generations ahead to still be looking her up to study her oh I love that and you want them to be studying her because she was a legend with how she held things down and propelled you forward. Oof. You know, my, my great, my four times great grandfather had 24 children with two different, uh, two different women. He was married to them both 12 and 12, 12 and 12, 12 and 12. Each one of them had 12. Did he mean to do that? Like any symbolic stuff? Okay. I don't know if it was symbolic. <laughs> there's no writings. Okay. Um, but 
he was married. He had 12, and I think she uh, transitioned. And then he got remarried and had 12. But I'm still searching for the information on her because she managed the house. She managed the land while he was doing things. Grandma Winnie. And when they speak of what she did and how she kept things going because she was way younger than him. After his transition, she stayed on the land. She managed it. She did this. And we still have the land. Wow, you still have that land. Yeah, in North Carolina. That's amazing. And so that's how we want to see um, the women that are our potential mates. If, if I leave, if I'm gone, what does this look like? What does it look like? And, and when we see it from that lens, then we make better decisions. The decisions become a lot wiser. Mm. I love this, Ra. And it's like, it's, again, you mentioned this just a second ago of like what we're told and what we believe. And, and some people use this wisdom and twist it, right? And to be like, in a comparison game of women, you aren't as important. The feminine isn't as important because okay. the man is out there succeeding and doing all the things. You just got to take care of the children, da, 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 like mm -hmm. you stay at home. And so how is that being twisted and like the more or less games and better or worse? You, you have this cycle going on right now that and it's interesting that you asked because I was actually thinking about this um, today and last night. Cool. Well, we're in a cycle that is anti um, for lack of a better term, family. The cycle that we're in is teaching um, this irresponsible sexual independence mm -hmm. of the feminine. Now, understand that the masculine has already been taught for a long time this irresponsible sexual, these irresponsible sexual practices. But now it's, it's going over into the feminine. And its path of destruction is way more volatile than when it was just men. And the reason it becomes more volatile is simple. She's the first teacher. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing is now being misconstrued and, and taking, you know, all these different this information of who's better and who's, you know, supposed to do this. A lot of these people are teachers because of the social media age. Yep. You've never done anything in the community. You've never had mentors, mentorship. No elders are backing you. Mm -hmm. You just read a couple of books and now you're a high priestess or high priest. <laughs> yep. And because people will listen to you, because people are ignorant. And, and and that's not a negative thing, they're just ignorant. And they're looking for information and wisdom. Yeah. They're, they're ignorant, they're trying, they want to know. Yeah. And they're easily led. Yeah. So because of that, you can come on and this is where you have, <laughs> and I'm, I'm laughing before I said it because I truly be cracking up when I read it. Somebody says something, then you, you have somebody come and be like, oh my God, that just fed my soul. That was so deep. And you're like, what? <laughs> that was the biggest crock of but they don't know. Mm -hmm. They truly don't know that what this person said literally makes no sense and is completely incorrect. But, but when you're hungry, everything tastes good. When you're Ooh. starving, everything tastes good. Period. That's just how it goes. When you are starving, everything tastes good. 
All water is good water when you when you when you dehydrate it. <laughs> so this is what we have. A bunch of starving people being fed manure <laughs> and information being twisted, but it tastes good. And so and that's, that's just the cycle. And, and we'll be in it for a moment. But what I tell people is that it's actually for the time period that we're in, it's actually a good thing. Mm-hmm. One thing that I understood um, some years back is I said, you know, what happens is those people keep the people who aren't ready away from me. Oh, say that again. The people who are feeding the manure keep the people who aren't ready for my information away from me. So it it, it, it helps my work. Mm. You find yourself right where you need to be to get the information that you need at that time. So even those people who are feeding people manure are, are being useful for now. And those people eventually, if they're truly sincere, will actually move on to to greener and more fertile pastures. Yep. That's where people like you come in. Yep. Because now those people have been cultivated and they're like, okay, I'm tired of this nonsense. Okay. I, I need I need an actual teacher being. Can you come help me? Because this dude over here, this woman over here has been giving me some nonsense. And it man, that takes a good for a minute. But now my digestive system is all backed up and I'm messed up and I need you to clean me out here because this stuff ain't working. Mm-hmm. My pores are stinking, all this stuff. I can't keep a mate. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't been told that, you know, I'm supposed to be strong and don't, you know, I can provide for myself. And here I am, I done got all type of diseases out here. I didn't this, this I've been told I'm supposed to go into this masculine atmosphere all the time. And now I'm wondering why the women in the United States have more hysterectomies than any other uh, women on the planet. Hysterectomies occur, I think it's 80% of the time in this country. Wow. Yeah. So raw, like I was actually wondering if I wanted to talk to you about this stuff, but since you brought it up, let's go into it. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> yeah, convenient right? Because I was like, because I kind of wanted to focus around like choosing a partner, but I think, I mean, all of it ties back in, right? Of how you take care of yourself in all the ways, media, food. It like, again, it's if you're a man choosing a partner, a woman for a partner, it's again, she's going to expand that and literally create more of that. And for a woman, you are choosing what to recreate and create more of. So it's all of this is directly tied into, you know, understanding it on a deeper foundational level. So when you talk about hysterectomies, is that just to make sure, is that when we take the, um, uterus, yeah, remove the uterus, 80% of them are in the U S last time I checked numbers could be a little bit different, but still, <laughs> but last time I checked, um, it was around 80, 85%. That's crazy. And, and even like you, if you think of infertility, right. Of mainly here, mainly here. That's so, and low testosterone levels mainly here. So, I mean, there's many other different things. What are some of the ones I'm missing? Um, I mean, shoot, there's a lot. So you got the, the infertility, you got the, um, um, hysterectomies i mean we have the highest disease rates incarceration rates high school dropout rates i mean um yeah i mean this is pretty much the, the shithole country he was talking about I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but i mean that's that's a whole different thing in itself mm-hmm. but when we're speaking about the issues that are plaguing men and women based on teachings that's where you start to see how the teachings, the food, and all those things um, are, are killing the different genders. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it is very much true that women are taught to be masculine here. So what happens? You no longer want to be a woman. The body does whatever you tell it to do. Mm. It just that's how the body works. So your thought process is, is I want to be a man. I don't like being feminine. Okay, well, let's destroy exactly what makes you a woman. Let's just destroy that because we can let's make this so because you you want to be masculine. So uh, let's make you masculine. Bam. Let's take out the hysterectomy. Let's start sending, you know, uh, poisons down there and and you know, grow you some things so that now that's gotta go. You a man, you don't want to be a man, so you know, let's start raising your estrogen levels and you know, let's you know start giving you all type of other diseases surrounding that and um um you know making you softening uh, your voice and doing all these things so that uh, now you no longer operate mm. with any type of strength or um, any type of masculinity because Le- leadership even yeah you don't you don't want to do it so your body will change your biochemistry to make it so and that those are scientific facts your body literally will change your biochemistry it's no different than <clears throat> If you're in pain and you don't concentrate on it, it lessens the pain. That's just that's just facts. Mm-hmm. It's your mental concentration on it that actually brings awareness to your body that makes the makes the things spike. Well, that's how the body, the whole human body, the whole human cells work that way. Regeneration, all those things, all is mind. And so, by infecting the mind through media, entertainment, and food, then you affect the body. You affect the body of the host, then you affect the children that come out of the body of the host. Mm. And that's both masculine and feminine. Mm-hmm. So if you can affect the man, the man, the man's mind, when his thoughts come down from the mandubla oblongata and go all the way through and record the information through his spine and then come out through his penis and ejaculate and send that message into the woman what did he just send in what did he just give her did he give her good fertilizer yeah or did he give her acidic fertilizer Mm. what did he give her to work with so that goes back to what you just said. With her choosing, what does she recreate? Because that's her, that's the choice she's making. Yep. And this is why a woman, a hundred percent of the time, should only be in bed with a man that she admires. Mm. Period. Period. You should only be in bed with the man that you admire. Because you will reproduce that man. Even if it's not children. Yep. Even if it's not children. Will you go in more into that? Yeah, because then we're now we're talking about the metaphysics of, of how things work. What we draw. She isn't she is a the womb. She is the womb. She is the gateway to the universe. And so she draws in energies. She draws them in. And so whatever his plan is gets embedded in her through sexual exchange. And then she becomes the incubator Mm. for that. Literally, she becomes the incubator for that. I mean, it, it gets it gets even deeper when you start understanding the um, how media and those things work. And understanding, when you understand the science of the number nine, the womb, when you understand those things, her choices become huge. When she's in bed with that man, if that man is an alcoholic, if that man is on drugs, if that man uh, doesn't want to work, if he doesn't want to read, his, his children, will always mentally struggle because that's the fertilizer. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Use the soil. But that's the fertilizer. And so he put in that, he put that into her. So she recreates this paradigm for him. Because that's what the womb does. And so she opens up the portals and pulls the energy in. But that's why it also becomes very incumbent upon men to not only be in a good place within themselves, but to also understand the signs of the number nine in the womb itself, because it becomes extremely powerful for you to be able to pick a woman who knows the science of herself, and then you all go make magic together. Mm. I want to open businesses. I want to get into real estate. I want to get into those things. So I go pick a woman who understands the science of her own womb. And then we come together, we meditate together, we get, uh, we sink our breaths, mm. and then we have intercourse for the sake of creating businesses. And so our mm. thought processes, our heartbeats, our minds are in sync at that moment of orgasm. We're thinking about those businesses. And then I, I, I send that fertilizer into her. She walks around and then she opens the, the gateways to bring those businesses in. And eventually we have them. Wow. Because we understood literally how to use these principles, not how to talk about it, but actually how to use these principles. And so the whole issue of picking a mate is way bright. And this is what the ancestors used to do. Not that sex wasn't for pleasure because it always was. But we understood how to manifest. Mm. We didn't have children by accident. We would literally have children um, because the tribe needed certain children. So certain women or or certain people who had certain energies would create together on purpose to create certain children that would be born in certain months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today you have all the misinformation and this phony empowerment and the yeah. lack of rights and passages of men and women and like we just screwed we just screwed up so i say when you find a good woman make sure you keep her make sure you keep her because the woman that knows the science of the number nine is a rarity right now and, and the is the science is the science of number nine just creation and met yeah or... understanding the science of the womb you know okay um, you know, you going through the um, the nine planets that you go through uh, during the incubation stage of creation in the womb and what energies they give you, understanding what energies you didn't get because there's three planets that you didn't go uh, through. Uh, so those okay, energies okay. in many ways become lacking. So this is where you need certain sea salts and all this other stuff. And this also becomes why certain family members Uh, don't stay linked together why certain siblings don't stay linked together because they don't serve any purpose for each other interesting okay or this becomes why you have certain friends if you notice a lot of your friends will be certain energies you lack you you know you didn't get the energy of scorpio um sagittarius and capricorn so then you have friends a friend that's a capricorn a friend that's a a, a scorpio because they give you that energy that you're missing and you feed off of that and it helps in your growth and you, you so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole understanding. If you look around, you have a friend that's within those months. And they'll feed you and they'll help you grow. They'll help you. You'll have siblings who are so grouped together in certain months and they may not be the closest because they serve no purpose for each other. So that's why you have, you know, these different um, children who aren't as close all the time. And if there's no connecting force, but anyway, so you have all, you you want a woman who knows that and you want a man who who knows that too, so you can actually come together, you know, and create. Mm. That is very powerful. And I think, 
yeah, just of how certain information, how you said, you said the word phony empowerment, right? Of mm -hmm. it's like, well, you, yes, the truth is you could have sex with anyone that you want to. Mm -hmm. And it's yes, sex is for pleasure. Yes. But like, how have you seen that just twisted even more? Cause when you said that, like a woman should only have sex with a man she admires, what would you say for a man? A man should only have sex with a woman. He same admires. No, a man doesn't have to, um, necessarily admire, um, but a man um, should only have sex with a woman that he would honor. Mm. When you, a man that honor and cherishes a woman gets up every morning thinking about how to make her existence better. That's a woman that he wants to push his legacy for. Those things become important because I don't care what protection you're using, um, children come out of sex. That's just part of what comes with it. Penis Incredible. goes into the vagina, mm -hmm. children can have it. Okay, so you can have on a condom, you can be on birth, doesn't, can have it. So you're always taking that chance. That's on the physical side with the children. But you're also swapping energies. So if a woman does not admire this man, she is reproducing his world. Look around us. Women have reproduced this chaotic world because they keep sleeping with chaotic men. Yeah. That's why all media, all music, all entertainment is ushered towards women. All mm -hmm. commercials usher towards women. There's nothing that's really ushered towards me. Why? Because if you capture the womb, you capture the nation. Mm. So if I can tell women, if I can give women information that's false and I keep feeding it to them, eventually they'll degrade themselves. Eventually, they won't want to be women. Eventually, families won't be so important. Taking care of your children in your household doesn't isn't so important. Liberation is more important. I got my own life. Back well, back in the sixties, you know, they only looked at it like they wanted a family. Well, women got their own want, want their own uh, um, freedoms now. So, like a woman taking care of her family wasn't a freedom or something like it, it, the, all these weird sayings. If you say them enough and direct them towards her and take away her other outlets, take away the other positive reinforcements and only feed her this, eventually she'll do it to herself. And that's the cycle we're in. She's now doing it to herself. She now feels like that degree she got matters where I've never met a man that married a woman for a degree. Most, most degrees that women have, men don't care about. They just don't. And that's not to say that a degree isn't important because a woman having a degree can give her a level of self-sufficiency just in case that man um, ever becomes deceased or is incapable. Mm -hmm. So the degree isn't a bad thing. It's the mindset that it's, it's degree over family that becomes the issue. Mm. So eventually she'll do it to herself and she'll destroy the family by not even having one. Wow. And that's just what happened. And that's where, that's the cycle, that's the ugly cycle we're in. <laughs> so how that, yeah, I mean, that's a lot, that's a lot of, amazing information to stew on. How is this, you mentioned earlier that this is in our benefit. So all the things that are happening in the cycles, we know cosmic or karmic contracts, not all that fun stuff and the cycles of universal law, whatever. So how is this phase that we're in right now serving us or 
what perspective can we take that's like okay yeah the all these stuff are being manipulated degraded but how is this how is the setting is this up or understanding the law of rhythm right of preparing ourselves and leading purposefully and intentionally during this time we're in the greatest era era of enlightenment we've seen in um hundreds of years um really I, the truth is thousands because we're in the age of aquarius right so we have the greatest ability to access knowledge that, that we've had for thousands of years as much as um, the empowerment the phony empowerment is hurting again remember what i said all of it's true yep all of it is a degree of truth so you have the overcorrection before you get to the actual correction so it's kind of like if you're in a car right you're going straight and all of a sudden you're still going straight <laughs> but someone jumps out in the middle of the street. Now, the person is only this big. So, so you could just, right? You just go around them. But because you're startled, you're scared, it's fight or flight type mode. You do an overcorrection. You go way over, exaggerate, <laughs> right? Just to come back to going where you were trying to go. That's the cycle word. So right now, women are being fed truth and untruth all at the same time. Yeah. Is it true that a woman can sleep with whoever she wants? Yes. Is it true that it's her womb? Yes. Is it true that um, she is um, the guiding principle of um, how civilizations will move. Yes. It's true. Same time, it's false. So, because the information is making women take back their bodies and no longer allow men to subjugate them, which really becomes the real issue, which is tied up into the to, to Gemini and astrology. Because it's through the subjugation of the feminine principle that the world has gotten off kilter so bad. That the masculine has subjugated the feminine, oppressed her, made her an item. And that's a part of why we're here. Now, we could go further back to show you how it's a karmic issue even with her, but we'll digress on that part. So, because she's been suppressed for so long, now I'm going to wild out because I'm, I'm free. I'm going to get my freedom. I'm going yep. to wild out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say these things that are absolutely true, but I'm going to misuse them in this overcorrection Yeah, because I'm trying to go here but because I I haven't had this information in so long, I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know how to use it. Mm. So I'm overcorrecting. Whereas I really just want to be respected and loved and cherished. Mm. But I'm going to fight you for a while because you've subjugated me for so long that I don't want to hear anything you got to say. I'm going to do I'm going to do it, yeah. what I want with who I want because I can, which is true. You nope. can't. It's not for your benefit this way, but it is true. <laughs> and so eventually she comes back to where she really wants to go, which is to be cherished, honored, protected, loved, wanted. But in order to get there, she must feel her power again. 
Hmm. And so she's trying to feel her power again through these struggles, through this overcorrection. And eventually she'll get there because it's universal energy. We don't really have a whole, we have a lot to do with it, but in a sense, we don't have a lot to do with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like this thing is going to happen. We're just not at the wheel in control as much as we think we are. Mm -hmm. There's universal energies at play because the great mother will correct everything. When yeah. we get too far away, from divine truths and principles, the great mother will correct this thing. Even if it means we got to go, i.e. the great floods, the great earthquakes, the great uh, cataclysms, the ice age, all that. Yeah, I got to go. Yeah, I had to control by. <laughs> and, and eventually she'll do that if we don't get it. But that's what women are going through right now. And so as men, it's not like we can do anything. We can't do anything about this. Not in this way. We can't stop this cycle. What we can do is find a woman who is more in touch with herself right now and that become our legacy. Hmm. Because as, he, as a lot of these women are in the potential downward spiral of trying to overcorrect, they're just not going to be good mates. And you will spend your whole life trying to make them that way, killing yourself. It's just what it is. Hmm. So then you move on to a woman who is more spiritually inclined and, 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 and more open and willing to learn and grow with you and build a legacy together. But you really can't waste your time on the other because they have to find themselves and it may take through their own karmic cycle, it may take another generation or so for them to find themselves because the mother's that are in this downward cycle are producing daughters who are still in this downward cycle. Mm -hmm. Now the daughters are trying to get it and you can see, you can see the pain, but that may take a few generations because they've been, they're going through their own karmic things right now. So you find a woman who is more in touch and that's where, that's where you build. I love that. Well, Ra, you just spit some, as I can proudly say, I coined the term raw truth. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. They don't know you knew. That's where, that's where it came from. <laughs> so the raw truth has been spoken. What else? <laughs> I feel like that's such a great, like expansive, deep, but yet just still surface level view of everything. Like, if people, if, purple wanna, if people want to learn more and connect with you in this intentional way, where do you um, lead them to or where can they go? Well, you can find me um, on Facebook, uh, Ramiel L. Bay, R-A-H-M-E, apostrophe E-L, space E-L, space B-E-Y, uh, Ramiel L. Bay. Um, or I'm on uh, Instagram. Um, at Ra underscore Truth underscore Astrology. <laughs> How often do you use Instagram? <laughs> Not enough. I'm okay, old. okay. But I mean, <laughs> I'm on there, but I um, I need to do better on that. You're like, I don't use it enough as a platform, but I'm on there. You cool. Know, they can reach me. I'll see the messages. You know, someone sends me a message. Okay, cool. Yeah, because that's more of my world, but I'll. I'm gonna go yeah, I need I need to improve it. Oh, <laughs> and my email. Uh, you can email me at uh, Ramiel one, same spelling R A H R A H M E E L, the numeral one, at hotmail.com. Rod, do you work? Do you work with women one on one, or is it more mentorship with women and couples? Um, I work with women in astrology, but it's not my place to mentor a woman. I agree. So, um, I can answer a woman's questions. Um, I can give her a better understanding of men. Uh, if she wants to have sessions based around that. Um, but 
I reference women to other women that I honor, mm. um, who I know would give them the information um, in a much better way than I ever could. I love that. Well, is there anything else on your heart that you feel called to share right now? Um, on your infinite mind and spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I just want to um, really give a big shout out to you because I think that um, I appreciate your appreciation. But like I've always told you uh, from the day that we were um, connected, um, you know, you are a great and a special being and um, my, my job was really simple and um, to get you the information and to, to help be a guide, but you know, you are a very genuine individual um, and it's very rare to meet someone, you know, who's, who's really truly trying and wanting and doing uh, the work. You know, as you know, I don't work with many people. I, I choose not to because I, I just don't have the time, but mm -hmm. it was a no brainer when, you know, Sister Pilar, you know, um, made the introduction and, you know, shout out to her for her tremendous work and so on and so forth. But I, I just wanted to congratulate you on the work that you've done, the work that you're going to do on your journey. Um, you know, keep up the good work, man. You're, you're doing a phenomenal job. And, and anyone who's listening, um, he's definitely a good mind to tap into. Um, and you definitely, you know, are on the right channel and on the right station listening to, you know, what he's saying. Thank you, brother. That means a lot. Like, seriously, and we, we already know, but seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Yeah. And with that said, I mean, you could probably start this conversation for, you could just go back. This is like, um, I'm going to, the first rapper that came to mind is Jay-Z. Like, this is like a Jay-Z song that you can go listen back to and find <laughs> just hidden gem after hidden gem after hidden gem. I and, hope so. And funnily enough, I remember when I was looking through my notes and you said a Jay-Z line of, the best thing I ever did for poor people was not be one of them. Indeed. It's one of my favorite lines. One of my favorite lines. And yeah. on that note, we'll leave it. <laughs> right. Thank you, Rob. Yes, yes.